Okay, welcome to the Havers Family Bible, where we take what we learn in our family and we bring it to you, freely give to your friends, share, get the word out. We go through the Bible chapter by chapter, and sometimes we, a chapter takes more than one night. We've gone from Genesis to Revelation, back to Genesis, and we're now in Psalm 66 of the Bible. To the chief musician, a song or song. Now this song, before we start off, is a millennial song. And it's going to describe what, what's going to happen in the millennium after Jesus Christ comes and gets the Jews in, in the what we believe is still a preacher, but in the place prepared for them and brings them into the promised land like Joshua did. Sets up the temple and he will reign on David's throne as king of kings and lord of lords. So when we look at the aspect of what this psalm is already about, we can look at the references and we're going to see what the period of time will be like. But it's not going to completely describe how terrible the tribulation period will actually be. It says, make a joyful noise unto God. And, you know, we, we comical, make it, you know, I, I don't sing well. But when we are looking at the fact is, when we're in the millennium, and all curses have been removed, except the curse off the serpent, but everything. you got the, the, the bears are lying with the lions, and lions are laying with the sheep. All are eating straw like an ox. you got a fruitful, bountiful crop coming up. Jesus Christ is on the earth reigning. And when you look at the, the make a joyful noise under God, do you realize a joyful noise without a curse? By blessings of God. Can you imagine how much the earth is going to ring out when Jesus Christ is properly seated on the throne of David for the nation of Israel? There have been times in the Old Testament the Bible says that the earth shook at Israel triumphing. The earth quaked at the sounding of Israel in battle. What is the earth going to sound like when, when it sound like when Israel gets that new heart? And they've been made clean for God by Jesus Christ. And there's a complete, absolute celebration of what God intended the nation of Israel to be. Make a joyful noise without curse. Unto God, nothing else but God. All ye lands. So this is going to be throughout the land. Sing for the honor of his name. That name is going to be Jesus Christ. God, Jesus, throw the Jehovah Witnesses out in their belief. It said by Pilate, the Roman government, this uh, Jesus, King of the Jews, make his praise glorious. There will be no half-heartedness worship to Jesus Christ in the millennium. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. That terrible does not mean, you know, bad. That means inspire terror. The terrible acts of God through the book of Acts, it, it made them afraid. Not Pharaoh and his magicians, but many of the people. There was a time that the people came up to Pharaoh, you know, don't you know we're destroyed? There was times that, that you know, they... When Israel was about to sin, they brought up, don't you remember what happened to us here? Don't you remember what God did to us here? Man, we don't want to do that again. We don't want God angry with us. That's inspiring terror. Through the greatness of thy power, God's power, shall thy enemies submit themselves on today. The enemies will be gone. And yet, the Bible tells us at the end of the thousand years, there is still, when the devil's released, there's still an army of people 
against Jesus Christ, against the saints of God, and against the Jew. And they're just wiped out completely at that moment. But if they are an enemy of Jesus and, and, and the devil, they're not going to make themselves known. They'll be outnumbered. All the earth shall we worship thee. Is that going on today? In coronavirus, is every world body worshiping God? Absolutely correctly not. I don't know who China's worshiping. Italy, they, they, the Pope has got Mary flying around in a helicopter, some kind of garbage. Germany's probably drinking beer. The royalty of England, they're, they're stu just as messed up as the kids. America doesn't even know who to turn to, what to turn to. In the millennium, the whole earth is going to turn to Jesus Christ. They're going to worship Jesus Christ. That's not now. That's future. That's not even the time of the songwriter. You can't say all the earth written to the nation of Israel at the present time when you got the Philistines are the enemy. You got Edom as the enemy. You got Moabites as the enemy. Uh, this comes to time, all of earth, all, will worship God. And shall sing unto thee. There's going to be great singing in the millennium. Sing, sing, sing. They shall sing to thy name, written again. Selah. That's that musical rest, or that's second advent passage. And we, we've already seen it. Come. Look how God always says, come. God tells the Christian, go, all the world. And to the lost people, he says, come. When, and to God's people, he says, come. When God's inside that ark, he tells Noah and his family, come. Come to see the works of God. What's the works of God? There's the temple. There's the curse removed. There's your child playing with an ass. And he's not getting bit. He's not, he has no poison. There is Jesus Christ on David's throne and all the prophecies have been fulfilled except the prophecies of the great white throne judgment in New Jerusalem and all that. Even in the millennium, there's still future prophecies that haven't happened yet. In the millennium, the devil hasn't risen up yet. He's going to get up after a thousand years. We know he's going to grab an army. Those prophecies. But look at all the prophecies for the nation of Israel that has been fulfilled. At the three times of the year, all the Jews and the Gentiles are going to come and worship Jesus and glorify Jesus. It's amazing. They shall sing unto thy name, Selah, come and see the works of God. He is terrible, and again, that inspires terror, in his doing toward the children of men. What did he just do? He just wiped out all the unbelievers. He just wiped out all those that, that are against the nation of Israel. He just wiped out all those that took the mark. He just put the Antichrist and the false prophet into the lake of fire. He just grabbed hold of the devil, Satan, and chained him for a thousand years. What's he going to do if you try to have a revolt or have some kind of sin in the millennium? The Bible speaks about there's going to be that fiery pit there. And he'll just tell you to go jump in the fire. Now we're getting some history. And future. He, God, turned the sea into dry land. That's the Red Sea. And that's the Jordan River. They went through the flood on foot. The Red Sea and the Jordan River. There did we rejoice in him, Joshua and Moses. But look at Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. There's another time coming yet. Revelation chapter 12. Listen, all most of the stuff in, in the Old Testament is going to happen again. Not all of it. Some of it. Revelation 12, 15. And the serpent, read verse 9 for the context, the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, Israel, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The earth helped the woman, 
and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. There's the earth being dried for Israel when they're on the run. So the Red Sea crossing, the Jordan Sea crossing is going to happen again. Verse 7. He rules by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. There are nations in the millennium. The sheep nations. There is the nation of Israel. Now here you go, America. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves, Thela. Pride. I'm glad to be American. God bless America. God says, knock it off. Pride is a sin. Thela. All that pride of the 666 and we worship the devil and the devil rules the devil. God says, no, sorry. You're done. <laughs> oh, bless our God. Make him happy. Bless means happy. Make God happy. Ye people, Jew or Gentile. And make the voice of his praise to be heard. Make it out loud. I can imagine what our voice is going to sound like, holy and righteous, without a sore throat. I don't know if we're, we're going to, you know, we're, our mouth's going to dry up in the millennium, but it would be great if it didn't. Or it would be great the curse of the water being taken off and having that great water. So make a noise, which holdeth our soul in life. You want eternal life for your soul, it's rested in God and Jesus Christ and nothing else. We've been reading about God, verse 1. We've been reading about the name above all names, verse 2 and verse 4. And if you want life for your soul, he said, Bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise be heard. Which? Who's the which? The God. Our God. Holdeth our soul in life. And if you have not done what God has told you to do, John says that he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. And it's like, hey, you disobey God. You have eternal life, but it ain't no life at all. And he that has the Son has everlasting life. Life rests upon what you've done with God. And suffers not our feet to be moved. Man, once Israel gets in that nation under Jesus Christ, they're not going to be moved. No one's going to pull them out. And they're going to go from, from that where the heavens and earth will dissolve and, 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 and that great heat that Peter uh, speaks about. And they're going to get the new earth. A glorious eternal earth. And no one will ever reject them or eject them out. For thou, O God... That, that shows us who the witch is, verse 9 and 8. Then, God has proved us. Thou has tried us, Israel, as silver is tried. Now, that's an interesting verse right there. And that's a loaded verse. I, you know, okay, verse 10, for God has proved us. I, okay, I read my psalm for today. Look at Psalms 12, 6. Look at 12, Psalms 12.6. This is a very important statement. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly devouring the word of truth. Psalms 12.6 says, The words of the Lord, okay, there is the Bible, are pure words. Amen. As silver is trying a furnace of earth, purifies seven times, That's interesting. Because the word of God is likened to the nation of Israel, and the nation of Israel is likened to the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not ever pass away, the Bible said. Well, guess what group of people never pass away? Israel. Are there Americans in 
the eternal life to come? Absolutely not. Are there Germans, English, Babylonians, Russian, Africans, Mexican? Uh, no. But who will be in eternal life by the name of, of nation? Israel. What will be here in this earth that will be the glory that we cannot ourselves take to heaven? Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. That Jewish person, that the nation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have been tried and will be tried again in Jacob's trouble. The word of God has been tried and both of them go into eternal life forever. One more place, Zechariah 13. Zechariah 13. Now this doesn't say silver, but watch the reading. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. And pay attention to this as we read more in Psalm. I will bring the third part to the fire. Well, that's coming up. I will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. This is Israel. And will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. I will hear them. I will say it is my people. And they shall say the Lord is my God. That's Israel. That tribulation period, that time of Jacob's trouble is a purifying. They're getting a spank and a hiney for not obeying God and the Messiah. Verse 11. Thou brought us, Israel, into, a, into the net. A net's a catch. Snare. Thou latest affliction upon our loins. Babylon. Rome, Germany, the Antichrist. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Airplanes and bombings. You seen the pictures from World War II? The Luftwaffe and the, and the, and the English airplanes and American airplanes? You seen the cities destroyed? We went through fire, there's Zechariah 13, 9. And literally they went through fire with World War II. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo went through the fire, but they came out, but they went through the fire. I assume they were not the only ones that went through the furnace of fire. And I am assuming that there will be some Jews in the tribulation period and others that will go through a fire. They've gone through waters, submarines, and the Navy. What was the biggest threat in World War II? The U-boats. Trying to attack the, the, the merchant fleets and the fleets trying to give aid to England. That's World War II. Did you not read in Revelation that one third of the trees are going to burn up? Did you not read in Revelation that one third, I believe one third of the water is going to turn to blood. One third of the sea creatures and the ships will be destroyed. Have you not read that that, that bitterness uh, meteorite, or I forget what it's called, is going to come down and make the waters most bitter that they can't drink? Have you not read those things? But thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. What's a wealthy place? A place of no curse. A place where Jesus is. A place where they establish as God as king. They got their land. And no one's going to kick them off it. What's the wealthy play? They got full corn. They got full barley. Full figs. Full olives. Full sheep. Full cat. We read the other night that the, the wilderness is going to have animals. What is this? It's dead. Not in the millennium. The hills are going to be filled with, with sheep and lambs and all kinds of animals. That's a wealthy. And he ain't talking about wealth or money or anything like that. He's talking about God blessing them with the riches that the land can bless them with. 
And that all that, the tenth of all that is going to come back to the, the Levites in the temple before the Lord Jesus Christ. I will go into thy house, the temple, with burnt offering. That's not church age. The temple and the law is coming back in the tribulation period, and it will be set up still in the millennium. I will pay thee my vows. What are the vows? All right, you're to bring this as an offering. You're to bring a trespass offering. You're to bring a peace offering. You're to come before the Lord three times in a year. You're to have the Passover. You're to kill that Passover. You're to have the lamb in the morning, the lamb at night with the oil. You're to keep the candlestick going. You have the bread before the Lord at all times, the incense altar. All that is a vow. And then any person, you know, Lord, I'm going to give you some of my land. Oh, Lord, you know what? I want to be a Nazarite for you. With which my lips have uttered. So here's a man saying something besides the offering. Lord, I'm just so mighty blessed. I want to give you all the cattle that were born this year or this month. Whatever he, whatever he vows. And Solomon warns us in the Bible warns that whatever you vow with your mouth, you better do it. I'm like, hey, I vow to you, God. I'm going to do it. And my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. You have trouble? That's Jacob's trouble. Those Jews are going to say stuff in the tribulation period when, when, when God allows them to escape out of the Antichrist and they flee to that wilderness where God is prepared for a play and they're going to say things to God. If you can get us out of there, uh, God's going to get them out of it. He's going to say, remember what, I, remember what you said? And with a perfect, pure, pure, clean heart, they're going to say, I'll give it to you, Lord. You know the Jewish people are going to make pleas to Jehovah God, you get me out. Listen, men do it in combat all the time. Lord God, you get me back home, I'll be that preacher my one wanted to be. Lord God, you be, you know, I'll go to church all the time. But when men get back to the States, they don't fulfill their vows, the Jew will. And the Bible says he will, right there. It's written down. I will offer the burnt offerings of fatlings, and with incense of rams, of increase, yeah, incense of ram. I will offer bullocks with goats. Selah. There's that sacrificial offering coming back in the millennium. Animal activists won't enjoy the millennium. Animal activists won't enjoy the tribulation period. Oh, the poor bears. Oh, the poor sheep. Let's shut up and get out of my face. The law is coming back. You know what I think the devil's going to do? See, right now, the devil has people, well, if I do stuff, if I offer God, then God will be pleased. I think the devil in the, in the tribulation period is going to say, no, nah, you don't need to do the law. The law, Paul says don't do the law. Paul says law is not profitable. But it will be. <laughs> the devil will always gets you backwards. That's just a side note. That didn't cost anything. Thela, guess what that is? Come and hear all ye that fear God. Where are those that don't fear God dead? Dead and in hell. And I will declare the Jew what he has done for my soul. <laughs> Go to any synagogue in the world, anywhere in the world, pick ten of them. And pick every 10 Jewish person, whether male, female, young, or old, every 10th one that comes out of the front door. And ask him what God has done for him. What kind of answer are you going to get? You're not going to get the answer to Psalm 66. And then you ask him, and you're done. All right, what about Jesus Christ? Oh, you, you ain't going to get nothing. Ask the Jew in the moment, well, what about Jesus Christ? He's our king. There he is. You want to come with me as we go see him? The Bible says the Gentiles are going to grab hold of that Jew. Come on. I know God is with you. Let's go. That ain't going to happen today. 
God. Rightly divide the word of God. You don't be ashamed. Many men and women that don't belong there, but out of pulpits, are going to be made ashamed one day, either judgment, saved, or law, that you were teaching the Bible wrong. I cried unto him, God, with my mouth, and he extolled with my tongue. I, and he was extolled. I lifted up God. I prayed unto God. I searched God. I gave God the glory. The Jewish person is not going to do that today without Jesus Christ. Now, if a Jewish person, man or woman, if they are saved and believe on the Lord Jesus, then he, he pleases Jehovah God through Jesus Christ. That is one of my people down there, and he's praising my son. Hallelujah. A Jewish person today without Jesus Christ? He, you. Whew, that stinks. Shut up. What God thinks of it. If I regard iniquity in my heart, I, oh, I sin. The Lord will not hear me. Oh, if you do sin and you don't repent as the modern churches don't teach nay without repentance, God's like, I don't hear you. What's the Bible say today? Well, the, the Jewish person say, well, I don't have the New Testament. Well, you ought to. Because it says if you confess your if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all righteousness. You know, a lot of times when we pray to God, God's like, God, you're not answering. God. Oh, God, I realized when the preacher preaching this morning, uh, Lord, I forgive the sin that he was preaching. About. I am so sorry. All right, now I'm ready to talk to you. Now I'm ready. And Israel, you know what their sins are right now that God's not listening? You have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I'm not listening. Not listening. Imagine the repentance that will happen when they see the Messiah coming. Whatever city God brings them to. But verily God, verily. Ooh, isn't that an interesting word? Verily? I wonder who used that word, verily, verily. But verily God hath, past tense, heard me. He has attained to the voice of my prayer. Guess what? Guess what God guess what this guy is saying? Listen, I confess my sins. I honestly confess my sins to God and God's listening. One of the reasons that God may not be listening to you because you have unconfessed sins in your life. Blessed be God, God be happy, which has not turned away my prayer. It is happy for God. It is pleasing for God that he hears your prayer and that you have confessed your sins. And he may answer yes. It's a woeful thing that James writes to us. We received not. Why not? Because that blessed God says, you didn't ask me. Now he may say no for some of our requests because, you know, for our lust, James says, but sometimes we don't get because we don't ask God. We go to we go to a human or a computer or whatever, not to God. God's like, hey, I can give you something better. Just call upon me. And there's sometimes that God does not hear our prayer because we have unconfessed sin in our life. Blessed be God, which had not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. You won't receive any mercy if you got unconfessed sin. We are ordered according to the scriptures, we're going to sin. God knows it. God doesn't want us to sin. Paul says, no, I think it's John says, you know, sin not. John says, sin not. Don't sin. Okay, Lord. Oh, Lord. And if we sin, we have an advocate. If we sin, why would we have an advocate if God doesn't want us to confess? 
That must be erased now in the modern church Bible. God already knows. And listen, I know you're going to sin. I know you're going to do wrong. I already provided for you. And I want to make you happy. I want to be happy. I want to hear your prayer. I want to answer your prayer if I can, if it's not to your lust. You got to confess those sins. You got to get things right. Along with patience. That Jewish person, there, when it comes to the end of seven year trip, I guarantee they'll be confessing every other sin and sin they can think of. And probably sins they haven't even done. And in one day, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to answer according to the prophecies. And to God's glory. 